Hello, everyone. It's Matt here. All right, all right, all right. This is your homeboy, Will. How's it going? Now, do you have a brilliant idea and think you understand exactly how your customers are going to use it? Well, this is a very dangerous position to be in. Yeah, because so many times we see tech founders who have a vision and are confident in their ability to deliver in how to, it will be used by their customers. But once the product is launched, once it hits the market, the features they're most confident in are not actually being used by their customers. In fact, sometimes their product has no place in the market. According to statistics, more than 42% of the startups fail because there's a lack of product market fit. And today, we're going to talk about this topic. So if you're a startup looking to build your MVP, you might be interested in this. So MVP stands for minimum viable product, right? It is more sophisticated than just a prototype. It usually has a lot of uh, features that are core to the idea behind your product. So it takes a decent amount of money and resource to actually construct the minimum viable product. Before you actually go into designing a product, your minimum viable product, you may want to first validate your idea. And one way to do that is to develop a landing page and use digital marketing to validate that idea. Let's say if you're building a really awesome project management tool, but you're not sure about that vision is actually going to be accepted by market. So a good idea is to develop, say a landing page and post your ads on social media and target the people who might be a potential client. In this case, it could be product managers and see how they respond to it. See the uniqueness of your product can really make them interested. And at the end, you can actually have a, a conversion method. For instance, uh, ask them to leave their email to join the mailing list. If they leave their email, if they're willing to give, their, uh, give, give you their email, chances are they're interested in the product. If you have a lot of those, then chances are, once you develop the product, you're going to actually gain a significant amount of market traction. Number two is you don't want to get too caught up in building the product right away. You want to try and build a prototype first so that you can test the market. Because if you build a product first, you might be really excited about the features you've incorporated, but the people you're targeting might just not be interested in using it. Or they might want to use it in a very different way than you originally imagined. And it, by the time you build the product, it's too late to work that. But if you had to build the prototype first, you could have learned those insights and learned how to use what your customers actually want and adapt your product around that. Right. So you can have a small pool of, say, beta tester just to test out your idea after you build a low fidel prototype before you actually build your minimum viable product. That way, if there, your idea has needs some tweaking, you can quickly identify that. And believe me, if you're able to catch those problems, this, these mistakes earlier on, it's going to save you a lot more, more money in the long run uh, or after you've actually managed to launch your product. And it's not just about product design and development. It's also about your mindset. You have to be focused on your customer. Many times we see founders who are too obsessed with the de technology and who are obsessed with developing the perfect solutions. They, f they lost sight of what's more important. And that is the problem. That is your customer's problems. Who's going to be the end user? And how do the end users value the value proposition of your product? You can look at it as the founders are building a product for themselves more than their customers, which is a very dangerous position to be in as well. And usually these are detrimental to the success of a startup. So always train yourself to have the mindset to be able to emphasize with your customers, with the end users. And it can also help you be more clear about your role as well. Are you a value add or are you a painkiller? Right, the ways to advocate yourself to your customers or, or present the message to your customers are going to be very different. If you're a value add, chances are there's other people in the market that have already had a solution that, that solves the problem. But your solution is going to be slightly better or slightly more advanced or offers more 
or, or, or possibly have better user experience. And it is very important for you to differentiate yourself from the other competitors in the market. Uh, it is very important for you to articulate a message that describe, describe exactly why you are better than your competitor. But if you are a painkiller, chances are you are the groundbreaking product in the, in the niche or in that field. In that case, you may want to focus on articulating and convincing your target market that your solution is going to accurately solve their problems. And once you're able to generate one or two successful use stories, then you will be able to scale very quickly. And most importantly, you want to be data-driven. By being data-driven, you will completely remove your own biases from the product so that you're not the one forcing the features onto your customers. Your customers are the ones choosing which features of your product they will be using and how they will use them. And you can fo focus on data collection based on the features of your product and see wh what are the features that are commonly used by your customer. Is what you are hypothesizing validated by the market data so that you can completely stay rational and decide on what are the best options on every step of your way. Common practice in a data-driven product development is leveraging descriptive and predictive analytics. Based on the data that you gather, you're able to visualize those data and generate uh, some type of reporting that can help you understand the results better. Some of the tools include, of data analytics include, uh, for instance, Google Analytics, which, which can help you collect data, and Facebook Pixel, uh, as well as some of the data analysis practice, for instance, using Python, Excel, uh, or you can uh, use Tableau. Those are some of the common tools that are being used by data analysts nowadays. So there you have it. Hopefully you found that helpful. If you're looking to build your MVP, please feel free to let us know in the comments down below which piece of advice you found to be the most helpful. Or if you already built your product, do you have an experience where you thought you knew the standout feature of your product, but you were surprised as how your customer perceived it in a different way? If so, please share with us your stories. Again, if you've enjoyed this video, please feel free to give us a like. And if you want to stay in touch to see more content, don't forget to subscribe or give us a follow.